Hey y'all, we're in the middle of hunting season. The two ways we know we have made it to fall in the South are hunting and football. I grew up in the deer stand hunting with my dad, but today I'm working on my bow skills to get ready for the rest of the season. Then I'm going back to my kitchen to use up the last of my venison meat to make a bomb burrito pie. If you are not a hunter or you don't have access to venison meat, you can sub ground beef for the venison in this recipe for West Texas chili that goes on top of the Frito pie. That is what I love most about this Frito pie recipe. It takes a classic chili recipe that you can customize to make your own, but then top it on top of Fritos. Like, how delicious is that? First things first, heat up your Dutch oven. Don't put your oil in there yet. Then you want to chop your onions. My favorite vegetable in the whole world is an onion because it's so versatile, but I don't really like prepping them. I mostly just like eating them. Okay, five garlic cloves chopped. Now I'm going in with my oil. I'm gonna let these onions simmer until they're soft and almost translucent, which is gonna take around six to eight minutes over medium high heat. Then I'm going to add in this minced garlic because you don't wanna put that in there with your onions or else it will burn because it cooks super quickly. It's gonna cook for about a minute. She's a bad man, my gemma. And then I go like this. Just as fine as she can be. I love Zumba. I'm using venison meat in this chili recipe to make it super banging. But let's talk about the outfit. Fry riding boots on up to green huntress pants, top by J. Crew, but best of all, this little ascot kerchief situation that I've got going on is style by Kevin's in Thomasville. We've got shotgun shells, shotguns, quails, and the signature brown, orange, and olive green. I could stand up here all day and tell y'all about cooking, but I'm gonna be real honest. The most comments I get on these videos has something to do with whatever I have on my body. Mmm, 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 mmm. Onions and garlic sauteing, y'all. That smell, oh my lord, it'll make you want to slap your mama. It's so good. Let's go get some venison meat. Like I said earlier, you do not have to use venison meat. You can use ground beef, ground turkey, ground chicken, or if you're feeling frisky, maybe some tofu. I don't know. I grew up eating ground venison as a sub for ground beef, mostly because we had a freaking freezer full of it because my dad is a super big hunter. Okay, now in each package is about a pound and I need two pounds for this recipe. Food Safety 101. After you thaw frozen meat, you need to use it. Do not refreeze it unless like you can cook it and then refreeze it, but don't refreeze it uncooked, raw, no bueno for food safety. Just like any other ground meat recipe, you put the whole hunk of meat in there and then immediately start stirring and hacking at it because you want this to be crumbled and browned all the way through. Next thing, after your meat is all the way browned and crumbled, you need to drain the excess fat off of your meat. So you can take your meat out, put it onto a paper towel lined plate because that is super messy and kind of hard to do on camera. I am going to fast forward and we'll come back and this will be drained. So here we go. Now it's time for our spices. Three tablespoons of ancho chili powder, two tablespoons of cumin, one tablespoon of paprika. Oh, we need salt. One tablespoon of salt two cans of diced tomatoes, and one whole can of tomato paste. Gosh, it smells like heaven. The thing that I love most about fall, y'all, is this smell right here. I think to me, chili is just like classic fall smell. Perfect for football watching season, perfect for busy fall nights and weekends. You can make this on a Sunday and have it the rest of the week. It's so warm and comforting. 
now I'm going to add in some Bira. You can really use whatever you have on hand. I'm using a Louisiana wheat ale, pretty much whatever. 12 ounces, I'm gonna put half in right now. If you do not like to use alcohol whenever you're cooking, that is totally fine. You could easily sub in some beef stock, chicken stock, or just plain water at this step. All of the alcohol cooks out though, so you don't have to worry about the effects of alcohol whenever you're using beer. I just really like the depth of flavor that it adds. And now I'm going to use one cup of water, and I'm going to let this simmer for about 20 minutes or until it's thick. Then I'm gonna go back in with the rest of my beer and a half cup of water and let it simmer again. I'm gonna add in two tablespoons of masa harina. This thickens the chili up. And for all of you gluten-free eaters out there, it's gluten-free, this whole chili. And if you put it with Fritos, those are also gluten-free. It's flying everywhere, let me step back. If the things start flying at you, popping everywhere, it's hot. Turn it down, walk away. Don't get your white shirt messed up. Word to the wise. You can let this simmer for as long as you want to. The recipe says, until desired consistency is reached. For me, the desired consistency is reached mostly because I am hungry. To serve the Frito pie, you can either serve it in a large bowl or an in individual cast iron skillets for a really cute change up or if you wanna make it portable, spoon your chili right into the bag of Fritos. It is perfect for tailgating or for sitting around to watch football inside or out. This recipe for Frito pie is perfect for the busy fall season and for hunting season, no matter which meat you decide to use in your chili. But if you do have a great recipe for subbing venison for ground beef, I would love to read about it in the comments on our YouTube page. If you haven't already, subscribe to Southern Living on YouTube. But as always, we are on Facebook and Instagram. We will see you next time. Bye, y'all.